Hello, hello, and welcome back, subscribers and new viewers to another Sunday Speed Paint. And a very exciting adjustment, if you haven't noticed the new styles and the new studio, I have been working very diligently so that the end of this year can wrap up very smoothly, and to continue with the hyperfixation of Undertale alternate universes, I bring to you another one of my characters named Buckthorn. Now these alternate universe illustrations and ideas that I have with these characters are a part of a place that I call Nexium. It is essentially many stories in one place, to where I'll be working on developing my skills and prioritizing various projects in a more manageable way. With these characters, it can range from Undertale alternate universe characters that don't actually have a full-blown story. Essentially, it's just, well, Buckthorn and Archer and Calypso, Cami, Cove, Grey, Vale, all of these Undertale characters that don't actually have the rest of the world there, they're not in an underground, none of that stuff. They're in Nexium, which is a place that has tons of different world spaces that they can exist in. For this instance, Buckthorn is in his mansion, and the others can easily go visit him. Same thing with, for example, any of my other characters that don't belong to any other set stories. Now, the set stories that I do have, such as my webtoons that are on hiatus like The Dawn of Gales and Twilight of Serpents, this is a way for me to also work on developing more of making comics character turnarounds and all of that stuff for stylization purposes and being able to manage all of this stuff without getting art block or burnout. To share all of these stories while expanding my portfolio, to do all of the usual little fun comic stuff, illustrations, animation memes, and animatics for these videos that'll be in playlists that'll be ongoing for my art journey. A lot of this stuff is why I work on art challenges here and there, so you guys still have content to watch while you wait while I have other projects, like I said, that are on hiatus. A lot of the stuff that I have been doing this year has been more experimental than anything before, but has the most results that I've had with a lot of the content, especially over the past three years. A lot of my art and a lot of the reasons why I had been making these videos had changed back and forth between me wanting to do a bunch of one-off stories through animation memes, the little mini comics, animatics, and even just me sharing stories over speed paints so that you guys could have little fun content to watch, but all of them were so disconnected that it was essentially me showing you the characters and expecting you to know their entire personalities, to know what's going on, to show don't tell, but still having to tell it anyways because nobody but me could seem to understand it, especially with the sliver of content and information. It's essentially like when people get hooked on those like TikTok short clips from TV show segments and you're like, whoa, I've never seen this before, I want to watch more. Except in this case, you only watch one of them, and there's no series to turn back to, because you're like, oh, wait, that's it? Well, what happens to this character? Why are they like this? You know, all of that stuff. And you're just like, well, shrug, time to move on. <laughs> that's how I felt when looking at some of my old content, and why I would wanted to put it properly into the format of the world of Nexium, so that if you are looking for any particular characters in any of these stories, it makes more sense as to the fact that they are indeed one-off characters, where their personality and all that stuff gets fleshed out in smaller segments, rather than an entire story cover to cover. With the character Buckthorn, one unique thing about their personality was strongly leaning towards the sort of emphasis of trauma, of the weird way of them coping with it. The fact that they had a Echo Flower hybrid fused to the inside of their eye socket would be very traumatic and would probably impair them, but they took it in strides in the fact that it was an experiment that had a successful result despite the consequences to the experiment's action and all that. What ended up happening is their magic tended to expand with vines instead of bones, and some of the bones would be wrapped in it, almost like a weird twisted magical fertilizer amplifying it. The vines would essentially work the same as a blue magic type of thing, where they would latch onto the soul, but with a more painful response. The thorns could either detach like tiny little spikes, like how jumping cactus would react to you if you get too close to them, or launching them like tiny little darts, or even just wrapping around your leg and tightly digging into it. Another thing with the gaster blasters design is that they have the same fused uh, eye socket with the flowers that sort of amplifies that kind of stuff, but the blasting still has the impacted effect 
that a blaster would do, but I just, I don't really know the extreme details of how they would interact with all the characters yet, which is what I aim to do with trying to introduce them to Cami, Cove, Grey, and Vale in more mini-comics for practice, which is where all of those little mini-comics like Dust meeting a bitty swap or the failed mission multiverse kind of little fan project that I had made with a few panels, testing this simplified style with just enough rendering detail to show off implied textures here and there in the digital format to set the atmosphere and mood and lighting and all of that with the rendering is what I aim for for these comics and all of this to show off these characters instead of having to tell it to you like a story unless I'm actually doing a speed paint where I talk about spooky stories like story times. <laughs> so hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video and the general direction that I'm leaning towards more for the channel for the better and if you have any questions about it let me know and for the next video stay tuned because I am going to be doing the uh, Sketchtober tour of all of my illustrations and featuring all those who tagged me in it with their prompt illustrations in the Subscribers Gallery at the end of that video, which will be going up the day before Halloween. That's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so very much. If you have not already, don't forget to leave some likes and comments and subscribe to join the Subscribers squad. In the meantime, don't forget to check out some of my playlists, and if you would like any fan artwork featured at the end of the video in the Subscribers Gallery, tag me in it. I would love to see what you guys make, and if you'd like to support my works and see more, check out my card link below, especially for the patron exclusive rewards. Two pounds a month, the Fennec Fox tier gets you access to secret sketches and artwork early. The Arctic Foxes, for five pounds a month, you get exclusive access to videos and webtoons pages early, and the Red Foxes have the opportunity to be featured as a background character or a commission instead, and your name read out at the end of the videos just like this. Thank you so much to Frankie Jr. 13. Stay possum subscribers, and I'll see you real soon.